Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my first uh, question here is to uh, Dr. Daya Ratna. Uh, you did a fantastic job providing some high quality information. I know that some of the, inform some of the conversation that we've had uh, so far this morning has focused on health outcomes and health outcomes are important. Public health is important. If we're uh, polluting the environment, we need to understand that. Um, what is fascinating about the data that you provided is uh, global per capita energy consumption and its relationship to four key health metrics. One of those metrics um, being the number of doctors per 1,000 people, another being life expectancy in years, another child mortality rate, and another more maternal mortality deaths per 100,000 live births. What we see in your data very clearly is an extraordinarily strong relationship between energy production and positive health outcomes. And uh, we hear from folks on the other side of this issue often that producing energy creates negative health out outcomes, but the hard data says the exact opposite. Can you provide us with some additional context to your research on these matters? Oh, absolutely, and that's a great question, Congressman. So like a, as I was alluding to when I began my testimony, many people take energy for granted. Like when you flip on a light switch or turn on your car, many people don't understand the beauty that goes, behind, goes on behind the scenes. This is exactly the case in, in terms of healthcare, for example. Uh, energy is needed to enable doctors to do their jobs, to train doctors. So this is why you see more doctors in areas that consume more energy. Um, in terms of life expectancy and child mortality and maternal mortality, a life expectancy increases, child and maternal mortality plummet because net in countries that consume more energy, they have more access to this life-saving medical equipment and they have the ability to power them. But this is to me actually one of the most interesting parts of that analysis. And the paper that that's coming from is titled Powering Human Advancements with my colleagues Diana Fershcott Roth, Richard Stern, and Miles Pollard, and it's published on the Heritage Foundation website. If you look at deaths due to dirty air and deaths due to dirty water, they plummet in countries that consume more energy um, by over 90% compared to the less developed counterparts on the, <clears throat> on the other side of the world. And the bottom line is affordable and reliable energy is paramount to being able to have clean air, to being able to, to filter water and engage in modern sanitation techniques. So the bottom line is access to affordable and reliable energy is paramount to a flourishing society. Thank you. Thank you for that additional context. I couldn't agree more. You know, we, we have a moral imperative in this Congress to ensure that we have inexpensive, abundant, reliable energy, no matter where that source is coming from, because the data, the hard data shows that that is what is in the best interest of the public health. And I appreciate that research that you've done, the hard work that you've put in. One additional uh, uh, question for Mr. Sweetnam. Expanding our strategic reserve for critical minerals, uh, we have an opportunity, I believe, in this Congress to take a look at the critical minerals that we have and that we hold in reserve and the critical minerals that we do not currently hold in reserve. Can you give us some additional context or maybe just some of your own thoughts on why we should have strategic mineral and energy reserves and why they're important to our national security and economic interests? I think the one way I think about it is an example of when Japan was trying to protect, protect its fishing uh, areas from, uh, from the Chinese, and the Chinese kept encroaching, and so the Japanese Coast Guard captured a Chinese fishing vessel. The Chinese immediately shut off the supply of iridium to Japan, which is the blue in CRT uh, and uh, computer displays. The Japanese caved within a week and gave the fishing vessel back. So that ability to have so much control over critical materials and ability to cut them off, I think uh, provides an economic risk to us that we don't want to live with. Thank you for that, that uh, insight. You know, Alaska has nearly every critical mineral on the critical minerals list. As our chairman mentioned earlier, uh, it does no good if they stay in the ground. We've got to get them out of the ground. We've got to mine those resources, process those resources, and then ensure that we have the, the requisite uh, storage of those resources in strategic reserves in the event that they become necessary for economic or national security purposes. And with that, I yield back.